God, that moves from the inside, oh God, that changes us from the inside, hallelujah, God, and it moves, oh God, even to the outside, Lord. God, we're praying, Lord Jesus, that you will have thine own way, hallelujah, God. Break the chains, hallelujah, Jesus. Destroy the chains, hallelujah, God. That's been holding back some people, hallelujah, Jesus. Destroy the yoke of bondage, hallelujah, God. Lord God, we're praying for freedom, hallelujah. Freedom to worship, hallelujah, Jesus. Freedom to live for you, hallelujah, God. Freedom of a soul, hallelujah, Jesus. God, we're praying that your will will be done, hallelujah, God. Anything that you see fit, hallelujah, Jesus. For you are the great creator, hallelujah. You are the great I am, hallelujah, Jesus. Our God, you are everything that we need, Lord God. You are everything our hearts will ever need, Lord Jesus. You are everything that we need, Lord God. It says you are our savior, God. You are our keeper, hallelujah, Jesus. You are our redeemer, hallelujah, God. You are our healer, Lord Jesus. You are our comforter, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are everything that we need, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, hallelujah, God. For you're all we need, hallelujah, Jesus. You're all we need, oh God. You're all we need, hallelujah, Jesus. Help us to remember, hallelujah, God, when we are falling, hallelujah, that you're all we need, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, and you will always be there, hallelujah. Have thine own way, Lord Jesus, in this house. Have thine own way, oh God. Move from the pulpit, hallelujah, Jesus. Move upon the choir, hallelujah, God. Move upon the praise team, hallelujah, Jesus. Move in the aisles, hallelujah, God. Move in the pews, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, let your Shekinah glory, hallelujah. Move in this house, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Take full control, hallelujah. You are the potter, hallelujah, Jesus. We are but the clay, hallelujah. Help us to surrender ourselves in your hands, oh God. Help us to be the clay in your hands, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, help us not to try to be the potter, hallelujah, God. But to be the clay in your hands, Lord Jesus. Mold us, hallelujah. Make us, hallelujah. Break us if you have to, hallelujah, Jesus. Make us over again, hallelujah, God. God, we're thanking you, Jesus, for all you are going to do, Lord God, and all you've already done, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, God. We thank you, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, God, you're worthy, God. You are worthy, hallelujah, Jesus. You are mighty, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just worship him as we go back to our seats. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, hallelujah. Thank you, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah, everything that we need, hallelujah. It's all in him, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, we'll turn to song number 294. Hallelujah, Jesus, it is all in him hallelujah jesus everything we need everything we ever hope for hallelujah jesus is wrapped up tied up tangled up in jesus hallelujah amen. thank you hallelujah jesus amen. amen the mighty god is jesus the, the prince of peace is he the everlasting Father, the King eternally, the wonderful in wisdom, by whom all things were made, the fullness of the Godhead, in Jesus is displayed, oh, it's all in Him, it's all
than the day before hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah songwriter says he gets sweeter 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 as the days go by amen he gets sweeter 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 as the moments, sweeter fly. As the moments fly amen love praise you. the love his love is richer all right you're on good there amen praise god but i want to welcome each and every one of you into the house of the Lord today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to True Witness Apostolic Church. We just want to glorify God today. Amen. Jesus is the center of our joy. Amen. And that's why we worship him today. Praise God. At this time, I just want to welcome every visitor and everyone that is here tonight on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Yulo McCoy, praise God, and our bishop, Bishop Henry J. McCoy. And we just want to give God all the glory today. Amen. It's not about you. Jesus. It's not about me, amen? amen, but it's about Jesus, praise God, and we're going to give him all the glory today. Praise God, at this time we're just going to have our um, Bible reading, scripture reading, praise the Lord, and Brother Dwayne's coming, amen, and he's going to come and do that for us, so let us just stand, praise God, and we're just going, it's the last night of the feast, praise God, and I'm here to celebrate, we had two go down in baptism today. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. And we're looking for more. The water is still troubled, praise God. So we're here to worship. You might feel tired, push past that. Amen. You might feel weary, push past that. Praise God, because we still need some souls to be buried in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, today's scripture reading is taken from like 1 John chapter 4, 1 through 4, correct? Yeah. All right. Uh, when we find it, please say amen. 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 Okay, I will read um, the verses and we'll read the last one together. Okay. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses, confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. We read the last verse together. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Great become great the peace that is in you, that he is in the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. And hand back the service to Sister Lisa. <laughs> Shall we praise the Lord, everyone? Can we bless the Lord again? Hallelujah. Our God is worthy. Hallelujah. Our God is greater. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we going to sing that song today? Amen. Our God is greater. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I know you might feel tired, but that's okay. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. 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 Greater, greater is he, is he. That, is in you that is in you than the tiredness that you feel. Come on, turn to your next neighbor and say, neighbor, greater is he 
that is in you than the tiredness that you feel. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Push past that. Hallelujah. We're here to worship the Lord today. Hallelujah. We're here to give him all the glory. Hallelujah. We're here to give him all the praise today. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're here to give him all the praise. Come on.
We adore you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Greater worship, God. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, when I think about his word, hallelujah, when I think about his strength, when I think about his power, when I think about his might, hallelujah. Oh, my soul doth magnify the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, I praise his name, for he is worthy. He is awesome. He is wonderful, hallelujah. He's altogether lovely, hallelujah, and he deserves worship, hallelujah, God. We honor you tonight, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you tonight, oh God, hallelujah, for he's worthy, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's just all lift our hands one more time and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. I don't know what you're thanking him for. Hallelujah. You have to have your own reason for thanking him today. Hallelujah. But just say it again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, you kept me from the hospital. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You thank you, oh God, you kept me from crack houses and you thank you kept me from walking the streets and you kept me from turning myself over. Oh God, I want to say thank you, Jesus. You kept me from prison. You kept me from jail. Hallelujah. You kept me. You kept me. You kept me. Hallelujah. I'm not in an institution today, oh God, because you kept me. You kept my mind. You kept my body. Hallelujah, Jesus. You kept me, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. We have so much to give thanks for today. Hallelujah. And we honor him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. At this time, praise the Lord. We're just going to have a few minutes of testimony. Amen. I want you to really think about what God has done for you. Amen. And if anyone has a victory, I mean, a a victory testimony tonight we would love to hear but i just want us to testify about the goodness of jesus amen praise the lord we're gonna have a few minutes of testimony amen it kind of sprung it on me so praise god hallelujah jesus i might have to do it myself amen praise the lord but does anyone have a testimony on this side tonight hallelujah jesus any test all right we have a testimony amen hallelujah elsa sister Elsa amen praise the Lord she has a test to me right now go ahead oh no you, you can just shout it out amen praise the Lord praise the Lord God, praise God. Let's celebrate. She received the gift of the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. It wasn't at the altar. Hallelujah. It wasn't even in the sanctuary. She was having dinner. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All the way back there. We just want to give God glory. She was baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we have.
have a right to give God glory. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Heaven is rejoicing because another one has been blessed with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, just give him the glory. Come on, give him the glory. Come on, give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Elsa. Hallelujah. It is a reminder that you don't have to wait on the altar call. Hallelujah. You do not have to wait till the preacher says, come or please come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just have your mind set on Jesus. And the Bible says, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will. It's a promise. You will be filled. Praise God. So God bless you for reminding us today, Sister Elsa, that all you need is a hungry heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Is there any other testimonies in the house today? Amen. Yes, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Any other testimonies? Yes, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes. the Lord hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah it's like fire praise God hallelujah the other testimonies amen hallelujah hallelujah praise God then forward still it is Jehovah's will though the pillows dash and pray with the testimonies in the house tonight hallelujah go ahead praise the lord amen
Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Yes. Yes. Amen, amen. Yes. Amen. 28,000 dollars. Amen. Amen. Discount. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's Alexis. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shall we praise the Lord? <laughs> Shall we praise the Lord? All right. The preacher says to rejoice like you already have your Alexis. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Any other quick testimonies tonight? Praise the Lord. Going once. Come on. Anything God has done for you? Choir? <laughs> they lost their voices. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> a car to God be the glory great oh my God isn't God good he's given us so many blessings on this earth that's what we Missionary McCoy is coming, praise God, to welcome and to greet everyone. Praise the Lord in the name of Jesus. Just clap your hands as she come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She's coming. Amen. Amen. Praise, the praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Praise God. It has been an awesome weekend. Just one of refreshing and the word and 
we just thank God for the fellowship and we thank God for the people and we thank God for everybody that he has deposited in our lives because we know they're there for a reason. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And um, I just want to extend thank you to the youth team. Praise the Lord. Sister Chevelle and Brother Sean and Sister Tamaine. I think Sister Chevelle is upstairs and Sister Paula. And just all the diligent workers of God. Amen. Amen. To those of you who housed people, the Wilkes, in their new home, amen, praise God. And Sister David, our whole house, amen, praise the Lord. And um, who else? I know I'm missing somebody else. Who am I missing? Sister Cleo, 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 can't forget Cleopatra, amen, praise God. Nobody likes Sister Cleo. And just thank you for everybody that housed, amen, praise God. And for the cooks and just the entire kitchen staff. Can you please stand? <laughs> Sister Bolden and Sister Rosalie and Sister Jones and Sister Roden and Sister Lisa. And I know there's some up there now still working and we're getting Georgia packed to go. They're gonna leave after the message and all the saints from Georgia that's here, praise God. Stand up and just bless God. Just a great set of young people, amen. <laughs> amen, and whenever they say Florida, say yes, okay? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Missionary Paisley and Grandma. Praise the Lord. I think you just came up from Jamaica and got baptized. I was here in the name of Jesus. Ain't God good? God is good. Praise God. She was of the Trinitarian belief, but God did his own revelation to her, and she's now sweetly baptized in the name of Jesus. And if you believe God tonight, you can get the Holy Ghost before you go back to Georgia. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And Sister Elsa, we thank God for you. You know, church was ending and Brother Sean ran and came and he said, there's a young lady who is coming and she desires the gift of the Holy Ghost and she's coming ready to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we heard like a lot of turbulence going on back there with the ministers and her and we thank God you prayed through. God is awesome and he's powerful and he's mighty. Hallelujah. And he's able to save. So to everybody that has just played a part in Youth Weekend, praise the Lord. It is an investment that this church puts into the youth. Praise God. We end up in the red every year in Youth Week, but that's all right. Amen. Brother Oral, I love you, you know. I love you, I love you, I love you. That's all right. Amen. Because we believe that we must invest in the kingdom to get greater. We must give to receive. Amen. And we thank God for you. Don't forget to get your t-shirt especially if you're a member of True Witness, praise the Lord. We will be rocking this team all year. So every theme will come off of the greater word, amen? amen. That is the word that gave God gave to us. It was actually given in the report that went to Jersey and Sister Karen prepared that report and sent it to Jersey. And that one word stood out in that report for 2007, 18. So we deem the word for 2019 that we're going to have greater, greater, greater word, a greater work, a greater worship, amen, and just greater. Mouse pads, I only have seven left, only seven, amen, God's perfect number, claim one, it's going towards the youth department, amen. So on behalf of Bishop McCoy and Pastor Paul McCoy, praise God, we thank you for being at Youth Week, praise the Lord. Minister Knight. Thank you, sir. And Elder Bogle, you're going to come on up here, our own Elder Bogle. Come on up here and greet us briefly in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on. With such a team like that, you should be excited. Oh, Lord of mercy. Just want to honor the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. amen. Honor our Bishop, amen, McCoy and Pastor McCoy, Missionary McCoy, all the ministers, amen. My good friend that cannot turn today. He's always night. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I, I just celebrated my birthday on Wednesday. So I decided to go out of town by myself so I just came off the plane and run on over here to church because the, the guest preacher I went to Linstead 
and December, hear this young man preach God's word. And I'm telling you, it's not many preachers can move, Brother Bogey. Especially these, a lot of these young people are young preachers. Because a lot of them don't have any substance. But this young man, I heard him and I said to Bishop Otto, I said, we must get him to Florida. And when, I heard, when I heard the name Williams, I was trying to get the first name. And when I said, it must be that Williams from Bishop Otto, I, 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 it must be him. So I'm, I'm here tonight, not just to look around. I'm here to receive a blessing from the Lord. I'm here to get something. It's my motto for this year is, I forget the things that are behind. And press to the mark of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Because I believe it's a great time for the church where God is going to pour out unusual blessing. And I was just talking to somebody there about the Holy Ghost on the altar. And I said, sometimes we tell people, come up to the altar. What we're really saying. Your altar is anywhere you can meet God. And I'm glad you, you meet him in the, in, in, in the dining room. Because you were hungry. Lord, when you're hungry, you must get something to eat. Lord of mercy. I don't know if she eat anything today. But she got something that she needs. Some, she needs some drinking. Lord of mercy. I, 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 I just love when people get the Holy Ghost. And true witness, God bless you. Amen. You're always on my heart. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Brother Bogle. Praise the Lord. And Minister Williams, praise the Lord. We want to tell you thank you, Hardy. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You came well recommended. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we just thank you for accepting our invitation. Praise the Lord. Brother Tenniel, where is the where's Brother Tenniel? I watched these two young men work this week. Brother Floyd, stand up. Praise God. Stand up, Brother Floyd. And where's my brother Tenniel? All the way back there. Wave your hand. And Sister Paula, God bless you. Hallelujah. These greater t-shirts were a mass production. Amen. She had a team up here last week, Sunday night, until 9 o'clock. We had to come rescue them from Sister Paula. Amen. Um, our kitchen turned a production station. But you just pray, pray for the young people. Amen. I told her this morning that she's growing beautifully. And our prayer when God is ready that he sends a good apostolic husband for you. Amen. 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 I believe in asking for things. I don't know about you. There's some things I'm going to declare in the air and I know that my father will answer. You're not ready yet. She got one thing to do. Praise God. But God is going to provide. Young people, stay faithful. Stay faithful. Keep your body on track. Amen. Your temple belongs to God. Brother Tanil, are you ready? Amen. And after Brother Tanil, it's followed by the children's choir. God bless you. Love the Lord. Amen. Love him. Love him. Love him. Love him. Amen. All the children get ready to sing. After Serona.
Can we praise the Lord? Praise God.
on, clap your hands one more time. Amen, amen. She is mine, just so, just in case you want to know. She is my child. Amen. God bless you, and she got it from me. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. All right, all right. I had nothing to do with it. Amen. It's all him. Amen. Praise God. But just turn to your neighbor and say it's offering time. And you're going to give offering tonight with joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to your next neighbor and say it's offering time. Amen. I'm giving with joy tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're just going to ask that you stand and we're just going to worship God in giving today. Amen. We're just going to worship him in giving. Praise God. And we're just going to ask that everyone stand at time. We want to hear the word of God tonight. And there are people here without the Holy Ghost. And, you know, some people get the Holy Ghost very quickly. Some babies come very quickly. And others require, what, 24 hours of labor? Amen. Praise God. Um, and we're just going to worship and believe that God has a word for us. But we really want to hear um, the word of God. And we want souls to be um, delivered tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're just going to ask that you um, bring your offering at this time. Stand as we do this. Praise God. And our ushers will pray for the offering. Please stand everywhere for the blessing of the offering. Righteous and everlasting Father, Lord, we thank you, dear God, that Lord God, you have enabled us, dear God, to be here tonight, dear God. Lord Jesus, as we are here for the last nights of the feast, Lord God, we pray, dear God, that you will bless every heart here tonight, dear God, and bless them, dear God, with their substance, dear God, as they're about to give back that which you have blessed us with, dear God. Thank you for hearing and thank you for answering. As we ask it in the name we prayed, let everyone say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just follow the leading of the ushers. We're just going to sing a familiar chorus tonight. Praise God. Amen. Georgia, you want to come join us? It's familiar. Come on up. Run on up. Yay! <laughs> All right. Just run on up. We're just going to worship God tonight. They're going back to Georgia tonight. Amen. 10 hour drive. So God bless you, Brother Marlon. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know when I'm driving, it's hard at night. Amen. It's hard to see. Praise God. But we just want to just combine and worship God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Just fo again, follow the ushers leading and they'll come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Someday I'm gonna leave this world behind me One of these mornings I'm gonna be gone Leaving this world and its troubles behind me One of these days won't be long Looking straight ahead with my eyes on Jesus Waiting up yonder in the clouds today I can hardly wait Oh Lord, I can hardly wait Troubles behind me, one of these days won't be long. Looking straight ahead with my eyes on Jesus, waiting up yonder in the clouds today. I can hardly wait, oh Lord, I can hardly wait. But I leave behind All I need is my soul salvation That's been ready for a long, long time I'm concerned about my reservation Mansion's ready and it's my own mind I can only wait Oh Lord, I can only wait
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I can hold the weight. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I honor the Lord tonight. It's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord to worship and to exalt the great name of Jesus. I must greet Bishop. We have Minister Knight. Mr. Williams, Brother Halix is here with us and his family, Elder Bogle, to all of God's children, God has been good to us. You know, this young lady came in today and she said she needs the Holy Ghost. She has been buried in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But she have never go down in the name of Jesus. But today, she was buried in the lovely name of Jesus. Let me say to you, each and every one of us tonight, there are a lot of churches, but there is only one church. And every church is, wherever they are, have a beginning. And the church have a beginning. And on the day of Pentecost, when the church started, the first message that was preached, the people that were there, they were convicted. And they asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter didn't repeat Matthew 28 and 19. He said, repent. Repent. So you know, you have got to repent. It's not a sinner's prayer business. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you, unto your children, unto all that are afar off, even as many of the Lord or God shall call. If God call you, you have got to go down in His name. It doesn't matter how good you are, a preacher. You could save a hundred years ago. Until you get in the name of Jesus. That's when you are saved. Without any further delay, I'm going to bring the preacher tonight. Minister Williams as he's come to minister the word. Hallelujah. If you are hungry tonight and you need the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is here. Water is here if you need to be buried in the lovely name of Jesus. We have water, we have baptizer. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God a praise. You can do better than that. Give God a praise. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power. I believe God's about to do something great in our midst. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just want to greet your fine bishop. Amen. Greetings. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and happy birthday when it comes. 
Amen. And to the First Lady and Pastor of this house, I greet you and sir in the name of Jesus Christ. Indeed, it's a pleasure meeting you all. My first time here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I want to thank you for your hospitality, your kindness, all the greetings, all the kind words. Praise the Lord. You're all wonderful. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe the Lord is in our midst, and I'm going to pick on someone tonight. I hope they'll forgive me. But I believe God's going to bless somebody in this house. That young lady with the bandana, the lady beside you. Yes, I'm going to come to the front. Sit, sit, sit up closer. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you want to join your friend, come. Join your friend. Come over alone. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And anytime you're ready, just take over. I'll stop preaching. Hallelujah. God's going to bless you and make you great. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody stand if you're able to stand. To your theme scripture, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. And also Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. Galatians 3 in 16. I'll start in Galatians. Now to Abraham is seed were the promise made. And he said, say it not. And to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 4 and verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The NIV reads, You dear children, are from God you came from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world by your heads father we give you thanks for your word hallelujah I thank you for your spirit I thank you for your anointing bless us now we pray grant us increase victory hallelujah I pray God that you may destroy yokes Open a prison door, set the captives free. Let your name be glorified in this place. Hallelujah. Let no flesh glory before your presence, but have complete control over the atmosphere, over every being in this house, every bench, every row. Hallelujah. Sit upon us afresh. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We're expecting victory. We're expecting healing. We're expecting breakthrough. Hallelujah. We're expecting the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory and we give you the praise. Let everybody shout in Jesus' name. Come on, I said shout in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you're seated, just find about four persons. Just tell them, I am a seed. And small things become great. Come on, tell them, I am a seed. And small things become great. Hallelujah. I am a seed. Be careful how you treat me. I'm not always going to be this small. I'm a seed and small things become great. 
Mr. Salmon, I'm going to need as much help as you can give me. I'm preaching all weekend, so I need your help tonight. Praise the Lord. As we examine contextually the text in 1 John chapter 4, John is giving us a contrasting evaluation of two dominating force. The first one he talks about, he talks about the spirit of the Antichrist that is working in the world. And then he spoke about the spirit of Christ that's working inside of us. And we know then that all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So what John is saying is that in spite of everything that's happening around you and the different forces and the different powers that are around you, God has invested in every one of us something greater. You were born with something greater and you were called into something greater than yourself. So John writes and he said, my little children, my little children, you are from God. You came out of God. This suggests then that you are a seed that proceeded out of God. If you came out of God then, your beginning didn't start with your mother and your father. You really then start with God. And no matter what you go through in this world, you have something deep down in your spirit that will help you deal with everything you will ever go through. Oftentimes, one of the existential questions one may ask themselves is, who am I? And we oftentimes define ourselves based upon what we do or what we possess or our tendencies or our passions. That's how we oftentimes define ourselves. But this self-construct then is derived from our own subjective thoughts of who we are. We are in our minds and how we think of ourselves. That's how we oftentimes define ourselves. Our self-concept can also be influenced by external agents. There are extraneous stuff that exists around you that impact how you see yourself. Uh, many times, uh, parents should be blamed for how their kids are formed or how they form their character because uh, we become that external agent that can either impact them for better or for worse. And many times it's the words you speak over your kids that really cause them to go astray because you don't speak life. You speak death into their life and then you wonder why they're giving you trouble at 15. But if you speak into their lives at 7 and 8 and 9 negative things, you're going to reap it when they become teenagers. So you got to be careful how you speak into their lives. So then it has a, your self-concept is derived internally and externally. And therefore then, when you look at it, one writer puts it this way, and he said, our thoughts or our imagination, and as it regard to our passion or concern, we take into ourselves, end of quote. Therefore, even though we have developed a mental construct of who we really are, we can take in concerns from other people that defined us. But you got to be built in a way that you don't pull in negative things that people try to put or impose on your character. 
because that's not how I was born. You just adopt things, take on negative things. But I hear the preacher this morning and he mentioned about the oil on David uh -huh. and he was a boxer and things slide off when you're anointed. You got to make sure those negative words slide off you. Don't attach to your spirit. Don't attach to your character and begin to define who you are. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You got to wake up in the morning every now and then and look in the mirror and say, I'm beautiful. I'm wonderfully made. I don't care the complexion of your skin. I don't care about the texture of your hair. You're beautiful. My God, I feel you. And you got to speak positive thing into your spirit and believe that God made you a wonderful specimen. Oh God, hallelujah. You don't need nobody to validate you or to tell you who you are. Anytime you need to know who you are, uh, James call it the mirror, the word of God. So if you want to know who you are, look in the word and it will tell you you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. Uh, oh God, anybody hear me in here? Let nobody define you with words that contradict the word of God because I am from God. Whoa. And God is the word. Oh yeah. So I came out of the word. So I am defined by the word. Oh God, I feel you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So then uh, psychologists will tell you for years, uh, they try to reduce the fact that defined human behavior they have reduced it to two main factors they have reduced it down to nurture versus nature and they debate this or oh, you have heard it over and over for you scholars where they argue that I am either influenced by my genetic composition inherited from my parents or I am influenced by my environment in which I was raised. Uh, so then you can be raised in an environment uh, and no matter your genetic makeup, uh, your environment may change you. Uh, and there are some innate things that you're born with uh, that you got from your mother or your daddy. That's their argument. Uh, but can I go against the psychologist for a minute because uh, there is a third dimension that they forget to mention uh, they don't mention the spiritual side of me uh, that is has nothing to do with my mother it has nothing uh, to do with my daddy but the spiritual side of me uh, came from God mm. And because of the spiritual side, you can't hold me into a vacuum based on my family background. Because my mother might be messed up, my daddy might be messed up, but don't use that to define me. Because my spirit came from God. Oh God, so take off the chains, take off the limitation. I don't care, nobody in your family went to university. You you are going. Uh -huh. Nobody in your family earned six figures. You're going to earn it. Can I preach to somebody up in here? Let nobody put a capsule over you because you were born with greatness. Uh, come on young people I need you to talk back to me I'm preaching to you tonight. I need you to say something to me. Come on young people say something thank you uh -huh. you are born with greatness you were born with power and with potential so don't let nobody define you by who you are associated with through your dna can i go a little further here when adam was created he was formed in the natural and being formed in the natural he was not conscious of his existence until he encountered the spirit of God because God stooped down and breathed into him the pneuma or the spirit or the breath and it's after God breathed into humanity divinity that humanity be became conscious of life so you can live no time 
type of life until your humanity experience divinity and then you're living a life I don't care how much you club how much weed you smoke how much do you drink that ain't living no life all that give you is a hangover in the next morning but I've never seen anybody got an hangover from Jesus oh god i feel like preaching oh, that's one drug you can't overdose on you can get a lot of jesus and still not overdose you can overdose on oxycodone and tylenol but if you get a lot of jesus you still can't overdose. so fill me up jesus give me more of you more anointing more joy more power Shama, somebody say, fill me up, God. More of you, more of you. This is the only thing you can't overdo. You can't overdo in taking in Jesus. You can't overdo the presence of Lord. You can have as much as you want. Somebody say, fill my cup, Lord. Fill me. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody cup is about to be filled. Hallelujah. I would submit to you then that humanity must experience divinity in order to truly experience a fulfilled life. To be truly human, you must embrace divinity and humanity. Because when Adam was formed, he got hands, he got feet, he got body, he got everything but he couldn't exist or experience the earth outside of divinity oh god almighty so i don't expect you how you expect to search this world of sin and find joy in it the devil is a liar if you want joy come to the well come see a man that can fill you up with joy because until you experience divinity there'll be a vacuum on the inside uh, god almighty uh, god told jeremiah then that before then you were nurtured or natured i knew you that means god deals with your spirit before you even had a form uh, and that means then because god knew him if God knew him before he was formed in his mother's belly or to call it the matrix the womb in which you were formed before you entered the womb you had a conversation with God in the spirit so God said I knew him in the spirit before he was formed in his mother's belly you are not then defined by your daddy's DNA no you're not defined by your mama's X chromosome zone no you are defined by the God that blew you into existence hallelujah and because God you started with God and you transcend body and flesh because before you had body you had spirit so then I my true self exists in my spirit come on so even though my body can be going through hell god have a way of hiding your spirit so you can go through a storm and still have joy because your spirit is always covered by god i feel like preaching hallelujah that's why when god said listen i wanted to tell the devil listen how you can go ahead and touch job but i want you to don't touch job himself read the text you can touch job but you can't touch job himself so I ask myself oh, how can he touch job and not touch job himself because God knew that the real man was a spiritual man and you can touch the outer body and still not touch the real man can I preach in here so when the devil touch his money he didn't touch job when the devil touched his kids still didn't touch job when the devil touched his wife 
he still didn't trust job when the devil touched job's body and job said maggots were coming in and out of his flesh he still didn't touch job because although he touched his body god hide the spirit so all along the devil is touching him he never touched the spirit of job can i preach i can feel it oh god bishop the devil might touch your body with sickness but he can't touch your spirit because your spirit sit in heavenly places in christ jesus so i can go through a storm and still got praise anybody in here in the middle of a storm the devil touch everything around you but I still got a shout. I still got a hallelujah. Can I get 10 spiritual praises? Just jump on your feet and say, I still have joy. I still got joy because my spirit is wrapped up and tied up in Jesus oh god almighty anybody tied up in jesus they used to sing in the days he's all over me and he's keeping me alive hallelujah you may be seated so then you must rejoice in your spirit through all your storms because i'm defined by the inward man and not the outward man so then would you consider then that god blew into adam and when he blew into Adam he not only blew breath in him but in that breath was purpose somebody say purpose when God's spirit blew into Adam he deposit in humanity purpose my purpose then transcends my human tendencies because although I have passion and desires when God put purpose in you your purpose is greater than your passion uh-huh never abort your divine purpose for temporary desires uh, can i say that again never abort your divine purpose for temporary desires because god gave you purpose in your spirit so no matter what you feel in your body what kind of desires and passion you have you got to understand that you have something greater living for you don't live to please the flesh and do whatever it does you don't live to go to clubs no you don't live to gyrate your body to every ungodly music no you don't live to intoxicate yourself with alcohol no you don't live to smoke meat and marijuana and be high and cloud nine and then fall like you're dropping from a six-story ceiling no you don't live like that but you live with a purpose to serve God hallelujah you gotta understand that your body is the temple of the living God and purpose is sitting inside of it so despite how I feel and who I like can i preach like a feeling huh? because your flesh will like things uh, and want to do things that doesn't align uh, with your purpose uh, but you got to resist your flesh uh, and live a purpose filled life uh, because there's better to your life uh, than just pleasing yourself uh, i'd rather please god uh, than please my flesh uh, i'd rather please god uh, than please you humanity because you can't please people they like you one day and they hate you the next and if the hat is too big they talk about it and if the hat is too small they talk about it so i'm gonna forget people and i'm gonna bless the lord at all times let everything in here just make a joyful noise because i came to the house not for the people but to see God somebody shout Jesus somebody holler Jesus can't 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 please people and I can't please my own flesh because my 
Krampus is greater than all of this. Etymological view of purpose implies that it's a counsel or plan. When you have a purpose on your life, it's a divine plan of God that's inside of you. We suggest that God has a divine plan inside you and he has already predestinated how your end will be. When God called you, he put purpose on the inside of you and not only that purpose suggests counsel and plan so the same God that's planning how your life is going to turn out is the same God is counseling you to get to that purpose because the, the writer call him a wonderful counselor so he not only have a plan for your life but God is going to advise you how to get to your destination hallelujah so then when you look at it then uh, within you is the fine purpose and plan that transcends your humanity and then when God then deals with purpose purpose drives you to get past difficulties it's because of your purpose why you're able to overcome the difficulties in your life and in your surrounding it was purpose that drove him through Gethsemane it was purpose that drove him through Calvary because the Bible said that for the joy that was set before him he endure the cross when you have purpose on the inside you get through anything you have to get through because purpose yeah, brings out the best in you when you go through difficult times oh god i feel you in here lord you don't know how much you can handle until you go through hell can I preach to some real people up in here? You don't know how much stuff uh, you can handle until God bring you through the pressure. Uh, God has to bring you through the pain uh, and the suffering. Uh, and then when you go through it, you said, wait a minute, I didn't know I was that strong. Uh, because God bring you through stuff uh, so that he can reveal to you who he is uh, and reveal to you who you are. Uh, because it's after you've been through a storm that you should have lost your mind but you look back over and said i don't know how i made it but somehow i made it through oh god almighty because you're stronger than you think tell your neighbor you're stronger come on tell them you're stronger than you think put you in the right atmosphere put you under the right pressure and you see some things come out of you because when he anoint, when he give you purpose he also anoint you and the more pressure you put on the anointing is the more the oil is gonna flow they say the more they crush the olive is the more the oil flow from the olive and some of you are being crushed right now but I can't with a word from the Lord uh, to let you know let them crush you uh, because the more they crush you uh, is the more the oil is gonna flow uh, hallelujah uh, you might have pressure on the top uh, and pressure on the bottom uh, but you're gonna survive in the middle uh, anybody in here can handle the pressure uh, you gotta stay under the pressure uh, the writer spoke about it uh, that we should endure tribulation uh, when he talk about tribulation he said patience in tribulation you should learn patience that means you should stay under it stay under the pressure no matter how difficult it gets some of us are so weak inside we can handle pressure but you gotta learn to sit under pressure let them turn it on let them turn up the fire seven times hot because I'm gonna stay Stay under it uh, until my deliverance come. Uh, oh God Almighty, any Jamaicans in here? Uh, any Jamaicans in the house? Uh, in the native Jamaica? Uh, when back in the days before there was oven and microwaves, uh, they used to bake a thing called pudding. Uh, oh, uh, and 
and grandma used to take it out to the backyard and get some wood fire and put fire under the bottom of the pot but not only under the bottom but grandma will put fire on top and the pudding has to stay in the middle when the fire is hot on the bottom and the fire is hot on top the pudding stay in the middle until it's time to be delivered I don't know who I'm preaching to but stay under the pressure the more they turn it up sit under it and let a Lord anoint you sit under it and let the Lord empower you oh God Almighty fire on the top fire on the bottom but I'm not leaving the church you can huff you can puff but I'm not leaving I'm not resigning I'm not stepping down I'm gonna stay under it talk about my singing talk about my preaching but I'm gonna stay under the pressure until the time high five three people and say stay under it it's rough it's tough but the Holy Ghost said stay under it let them turn it up harder the harder it come is the fast I'm gonna be ready can I tell you listen if you take out the pudding before it's ready it will be too soft oh come on Jamaicans you're acting like you ain't Jamaican I know the Puerto Rican don't understand but come on Jamaicans if you take out the pudding too early you can't cut it you can't enjoy it that's why the Lord sit like a refiner at the refiner fire and he's watching you go through the fire because the Lord won't let you burn the Lord won't overcook you when the time is right he's gonna pull you out I feel like preaching and it's soon coming you're almost ready for a pull out you're almost ready for a breakthrough somebody says time it's time it's time hallelujah somebody shout stay under it stay under the pressure you can't give up now I feel in my spirit somebody's on the edge of a breakthrough but stay under it somebody says stay under it soon I have a few more minutes here when you deal with a seed the Bible said a seed cannot when it stays by itself if a seed is not that does not die it abides alone when you deal with a seed a seed is a vascular plant that contains vascular tissues that allows it to evolve in a larger version of itself so within a seed is an embryonic component beyond the shell so there's a shell and beyond that is the embryonic embryo that carries the life of the seed oh god i feel you in here so no matter how they tear down the shell there's something inside of me that's greater than me that will bring me to another level hallelujah i feel the holy ghost paul in his writing to the galatians he characterized jesus as a seed and I said, Lord, why is he a seed? Because like an embryo seed. When Jesus, this when God wanted to redeem us, he had to get an outer shell. Come on, you ain't preaching with me. And he put on an outer shell over the inner God. For God was in Christ reconciling the world. So when Jesus came, it was God in Christ that's why when they destroy the outer body then the seed begin to spring into life oh God almighty so then deep down inside of you inside the seed is latent power power sitting inside your belly and that power is there to make you a better version of yourself 
somebody say better it's there to make you a better or a greater version of yourself that's why i need the holy ghost because it's the power of god that's enabled me to become a better version of me because i can deal with me by myself so god empower you with a new download can i preach in your term oh god because the old version of me was messed up by a virus called sin and in order to get to a new version you got to hook up to heaven and get a new download and until you get the new download you can become a better version of yourself I feel like some of you in here are running on an old version of your spirit you need an upgrade Ah, oh God, I feel like preaching. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time for an upgrade. The old virgin is not working. The old virgin can fight sin. I need an upgrade from the Lord. And all you got to do is search for the Wi-Fi. Get connected to glory and let the power be downloaded in your spirit and you know when you get it you will start to speak in another tongue as the Holy Ghost gave utterance you don't have to wonder if you have a connection because there's evidence somebody say evidence there's evidence when you're connected jeremiah said it feels like the fire shut up in my bone reach over to your neighbor and say neighbor are you connected i need to know if you have some power i need to know if you have some anointing shake somebody hand and say can you feel it can you feel it? I got power. I got power. I got power. Somebody shout power. Somebody shout power. I got power over dragons and serpents. Power over my feelings and desire. Power. Somebody shout power. Somebody shout power. Oh God, I don't have much time. Let me hurry on here. So when you deal with the seed, during the seed stage, the synoptical gospel lets us know that the seed stage on your way to your destiny is the most vulnerable. The seed stage. Because some things that can destroy you when you're a seed are the same things don't even count as a threat when you become a tree they can take you out in the seed stage but they can't touch you when you become a seed or a tree oh god i feel god right there that's why the devil don't like you because the devil know if you get to the next level he can touch you again oh god almighty so he's trying to destroy you at the seed stage at the seed stage stage and the synoptical writers they put it this way they said well you the seed then had to survive the fowls of the year in other words you got to survive the psychological threat the threat that you impose on yourself I'm no good I'll be nothing and fear and all these negative desire you got to overcome that and then you got to survive the thorns the thorns are the socio-economic threats or the vicissitudes of life that come against you when life just happens and make you want to throw in the towel but you got to survive that the seed also got to survive stony ground huh? because it's stony ground when you lack resources uh, you got to survive that huh? and understand that your resource is in God uh, and not in the things that you possess uh, so I want to tell somebody in here huh, that you were built to survive 
can I say that one more time you were built to survive you are no ordinary creature you were designed to survive from your very core of your being the physicians will tell you that before a seed the seed of a man reach the egg of the woman that the seed has to survive the immune system of the woman because when the seed enters the seed is being rejected as a foreign agent and the immune system of the woman begin to attack the seed to kill it come on and they said about two, 200 million seeds are released at the same time and when the seed begin to go towards the egg the natural acid ph kills about 198 million of those seed and leave only two million that survive the acid and then the white blood cell kill approximately one million of the two million Million, huh? and only about uh, uh, 10,000 survive the white blood cell huh? and they keep on going huh? and then 10,000 survive huh? and only about a thousand huh? will survive the fallopian tube huh? and the rest of them die huh? and of the 1,000 that survive huh? the fallopian tube huh? only 200 survive huh? and the 200 that get to the egg huh? unless you a twin only one step inside I'm here to tell you you have been surviving before you have hands before you have feet before you have head and if the devil couldn't kill you then but I feel like preaching it here if he couldn't kill you then the devil can't kill you now can I get 10 survivors jump on your feet and shout I am a survivor you didn't hear me high five three people and say i am a survivor the devil can't kill me i survive abuse i survive rape i survive rejection i survive relationship i am i am i am i am i am i'm a survivor i'm a survivor of 200 million i made it this seed oh god i feel the holy ghost somebody saw this seed made it this seed made it and the devil can't kill you because you are a survivor somebody shout i survive i survive i feel like testifying reach over to your neighbor and tell them what you survive i survive cancer i survive tumor i survive rejection i survive abuse I i survive it i survive it look at me good oh god i feel the holy ghost that's why some of you your haters will never like you because you don't look like the things you survive and they wonder they see you praising god they don't know the messed up family that you came out of they don't know the childhood that you have but if you see my before and my after you will praise god with me somebody lift up your hands and give god a prayer can i get a survivor's praise i think it's time for a praise break just praise the lord and say i survive praise him on the drums praise him on the cymbal for i survive i survive i survive somebody shout i survive i survive where my survivors at 
Somebody run out of your seat I just shout a praise I survived it Look what the Lord Look what the Lord has done I survived Shanda Masata, Rabaka Shanda, Shato Saya, Maka Shanda Bahai, Rabaka Shanda Baha, Yeah Lord, Asaba, My Mama, Mama. I want to move on, but I feel something in my spirit. Anybody got a shout inside of you? Just give him a praise. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all, I am a survivor. That's why. When they tell you you are one in a million, tell them no, I'm one in 200 million because I'm the seed that made it. And if I made it then, I will make it now. If I survive then, I survive now. So let the devil drop dead. I am a survivor. Now watch this. What you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the seed, it has greatness on the inside. And the seed, it needs the soil in order to transition to the next level. And this is where the enemy got you messed up. Because the devil forgot that you were born from God. Or you are a seed. So the more they try throw dirt on you you're gonna get it in two minutes the more they throw dirt on you the more they anybody got some haters in here and they're throwing dirt on you tell them throw it on because the more you throw is the better for me for I am a seed and the seed needs the soil oh god I feel it here so what they do your enemies they thought they're winning when they dig a ditch for you and pray that you fall in it and your enemies start rejoicing when they dig a hole and they put you deep but there's one thing you gotta understand that the deeper you put the seed is the better the potential to be greater for the deeper the root is the higher the tree so I'm so glad you don't like me I'm so glad you throw dirt on me for the deeper I go is the further I'm gonna rise and I've got a news for you there's somebody in here you have reached rock bottom you have hit the bottom they have thrown dirt on you they have trampled all over you but the holy ghost said get ready you're going through the process and it's time you're gonna break through the soil hallelujah because every believer i believe that when you're a believer in god you're like a slingshot everybody say slingshot oh god i know in north america here they say sling but in Jamaica they say slingshot and I like that better because it suggests that not only is it a sling that is flexible to flex but there's a shot that will fire oh god so what the enemy forgot is that the more he pulls you back he thought everything he's doing is a setback you lost the job the marriage got messed up the kids are messed up and everything is going wrong and setback after setback after setback but when your back is against the wall there's only one place left for 
for you to go and God said I'm about to release you let it go and let it fly I feel the Holy Ghost somebody tell your neighbor I'm a slingshot I'm a slingshot I'm a slingshot let me tell you this is how I know you're gonna be blessed this year this is how I know you're gonna get a breakthrough this year because of all the hell the devil back you up in 2018 and have you against the wall and thought you had nowhere to go but he put you in the best position for a release for the further you pull the sling is the further it's gonna go so I need about 10 in here who were struggling last year I wanted to give God a praise for you're about to be released this year this year is your year of release get ready get ready you have been crying you have been weeping you have been waiting but it's your time somebody shall release 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 backs against the wall but it's your time Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When you pull a sling, back up. When you release it, it travels faster than normal because of all the setback. I got news for you when god release you you're not gonna walk into your destiny when god release you you're not gonna run into your destiny because i hear isaiah said you shall mount up with wings like eagles so everybody that's laughing at you and so you don't even have a degree yet god's just getting ready to release you they say you don't even get married yet and you're almost 40 but god's getting ready to release you and when god release you you're going to overtake everybody that laugh at you can i preach it here when god release you you're going to overtake and get your blessing Every setback there is a setup for my deliverance. And what's this? The magnitude of your struggles is, is, is directly proportional to the magnitude of your blessing. So if you're going through a lot in 2018, I want to expect a lot in 2019. Oh God, about, about 10 of you got it. They, 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 they told me a story. I heard of a story with a boy. He's fishing and, his, and him and his father and he, and he caught a fish. And he's struggling with the fish. Real struggle to pull it in. And the dad said, oh, you caught a big one. The son looked at that. How do you know? You can't even see it. What are you talking about? Dad said, well, I know because of the magnitude of your struggle. That you're tied to something big because of the way you're struggling. This is how I know you're about to get a breakthrough. Because of the nights you've been crying. And the sleepless nights you've been having. 
that means if you have a big struggle going through last year my god i feel you you're about to get a breakthrough that's gonna blow your enemy's mind i wish i had 10 people to receive it in the name of jesus just shout it's my time so listen let me just close and in my conclusion let me just close my message here in my conclusion the ultimate then the seed that we need to talk about is not only us but the ultimate seed is jesus christ jesus is the ultimate seed because isaiah said unto us a child was born and a son was given and what the enemy failed to recognize is that the son was the seed and because he missed that the son was the seed he hung him high on a cross and he pierced the side and when you pierce the side of the shell you're going to expose the power that's inside and not only did he pierce the side of the seed but he made a mistake when he brought it to a tomb and he put the seed inside the tomb you should have left him on the cross because he's not just a man he's also a seed so when you bury the seed it might be in the grave for three days but after a while the seed is coming back up so I'm glad that I'm a seed from God because if my daddy came back after three days Oh God, can I preach it here? Tell your neighbor, my daddy came back after three days. So no matter how you bury me, just give me three days. I'm coming back out of this. I might be buried, but I'm coming out. Three days. Three. They buried him. They buried him. They buried him. They buried him. And the outward dissolved so the inner could take over. It's a burying process. The scientists, they call it germination because the seed must first die. This is a, this is, this is a thing. When, 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 when young people, for you to expose the greatness inside of you, the outer me. I wish I could tell you that jump around three times and, and say Shama Shama is going to get you great. No, when the outer died, that's when greatness emerged out of you. But, 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 but if you refuse to go through germination, you can experience the fruits. God has been calling us, some of us to die to some things and we're playing hard. Don't want to die. Don't want to die. You, 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 you're too attached to your passions and your desires and you don't want to die to it. God said, I put greatness inside of you but the outer shell must go through germination and fall off and then you see the beauty of who you really are so if you refuse the cross you won't experience the glory who is willing to die to the outer so you can experience the greater and the seed and the seed begin to emerge with fruits somebody say fruits because now the seed become a tree and begin to bear fruits I can't see your fruits until you die. I 
I can see your fruits. So, so I, I like your team. Your theme because greatness within me. But what's blocking you from being the greatest, the greatest version of yourself? The thing that's blocking you to be the greatest version of yourself is you. Can I be obedient to my parents? Can I lay aside some sins and some weight that so easily beset me? And when you begin to lay them aside, I feel the Holy Ghost. Then God begin to change you. Because small things becomes great. Small things become great. From f I came Friday, Friday night. And there's some things that you're holding on to. And you don't want to let go. I'm going to invite you to come to the altar. It's a different type of... I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Maybe this is not the Saturday, Sunday, night, Sunday night message, but I... I, I There's somebody else. I don't want to. I don't want to pick people out. 